Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be reacting to Ricky Gervais on work culture. So if you know you're easily offended, this may be not the video for you. But if you are not and you're here to enjoy the content, please do like the video if you enjoy the content. Comment on what you want to see next and subscribe to the channel for more content. Let's get into the video. When someone says to me about another comedian, they say, oh, they're not funny. Even if I agree with them, I stand up and I say, well, you can't say that. You've got to say, you don't find them funny, you know. Mm -hmm. And I hate it when people say, that joke was offensive. I got to say, no, you've got to say, you found it offensive. Yeah. Because it's all about feelings and feelings are personal. And there's loads of types of comedy and comedy evolves, you know. There's a new type of comedy at the moment called woke comedy, right? <laughs> no, it's very progressive, you know. There are some clubs now where the comedian has to sign a thing saying he won't say anything contentious or he won't say anything that, that could offend anyone. It's a safe space. Really? Do comedy clubs really do that? And what is work comedy? If Because my understanding of, of work is that you cannot uh, criticize anything or anyone. So if you know, you cannot make uh, fun of black, white, fat, skinny, gay, straight, what is your comedy going to be? I, I don't get it. For the audience, woke comedy. And uh, I tried to watch a bit of it, and I decided I'd rather watch Louis C.K. masturbate. <laughs> Can't mention him anymore. He's cancelled. Uh, not enough to apologise and move on. We've got a... And the big controversy last time I did it was a Caitlyn Jenner joke, right? Oh, outrage on Twitter the next day. And by outrage, I mean a couple of people going, it was transphobic. It wasn't transphobic in the slightest. It was a joke about a trans person, but the joke had nothing to do with that aspect of her existence. And that's the other thing about offence. People get offended when they mistake the subject of a joke with the actual target, and they're not necessarily the same. I'll tell you the joke. You make your own minds up. Right. So... <laughs> it's live, so they go, and now your host for the 68th Annual Golden Globe Awards. Please welcome Ricky Gervais. They come on, and they're all clapping, all the actors are looking up, smiling at me nervously. It's brilliant, right? Yeah, I have nervous. So I just go, relax. I'm going to be nice tonight. I've changed. Not as much as Bruce Jenner. <laughs> but if you're the type of person to revel in someone getting cancelled for something they said 10 years ago, you're just ensuring that one day you'll be cancelled for something you said today. Yep. You can't predict what will be offensive in the future. You don't know who the dominant mob will be. You know, like, the worst thing you can say today, get you cancelled on Twitter, death threats, whatever, the worst thing you can say today is, women don't have penises, right? <laughs> now, oh no one God. saw that coming. <laughs> there are no 10-year-old tweets of people say, there are, you won't find a 10-year-old tweet of someone saying, women don't have penises. Do you know why? We didn't think we fucking had to. <laughs> Try and explain Imagine something. taking someone from, not even 100 years ago, someone from 50 years ago and bringing them to 2023 America or Canada or Britain or, or France and let them see what is going on or just give them a, a Twitter account and let them see what is going on. I wonder how they're going to react to that. It's going to be mind-boggling for them. To someone every day what freedom of speech means, particularly in the context of comedy, and particularly in the context of a joke, that a joke about a bad thing isn't as bad as the bad thing. It's not even necessarily condoning the bad thing. Mm -hmm. It could be anti the bad thing. Mm -hmm. It depends on the actual joke. Yep. And this woman said, you should never make jokes about food allergies. <laughs> I should have left it, right? I <laughs> I sent back, I make jokes about AIDS, cancer, famine, and the Holocaust, right? Whoa. And you're telling me I should <laughs> never joke about food allergies. Damn, he really goes for the Holocaust? He doesn't have no stopping point. <laughs> she sent back, yes, but the Holocaust didn't kill children. Well, <laughs> it did, didn't it? <laughs> it was horrible, the Holocaust. Some would say as bad as food allergies. <laughs> oh, women. Uh, not all women. I, I mean the old-fashioned ones. You know, the old-fashioned women. Oh, God. You know, the ones with wombs. Oh. 
Imagine those are now old fashioned. A woman with a womb is old fashioned now. The world is upside down. Those fucking dinosaurs. <laughs> no, I love the, the new women. I know the new women. They're great, aren't they? The, you know the new ones we've been seeing lately? The, the ones with beards and cocks. They're as good as... <laughs> they're as good as gold. I love them. No, it's the old-fashioned with And now the old-fashioned, they're like, oh, they want to use our toilets. Why shouldn't they use your toilets? For ladies. They are ladies. <laughs> Look at their pronouns. <laughs> What about this person that isn't a lady? Well, man, can you imagine going into your man's restroom and find out? I'm not talking about like guys who say the woman. I'm talking about the woman who goes and make the surgery and now they have a penis. Can you imagine going to the bathroom and then you find a lady, a beautiful lady with all the hair, all the makeup, the dressings and all of that. And then <sighs> his penis. <laughs> Her penis, you fucking bigot. <laughs> what if he rapes me? She... What if she rapes you? <laughs> you fucking turf whore. Welcome to my show. Uh, it's not a show. There's no dancers or jugglers. It's basically a bloke talking, um, which is essentially what stand-up comedy is, isn't it? A bloke talking. Sexist. Um, <laughs> what about all the funny female comedians? Like, um... <laughs> no, no, no. Right. No, 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 no. Oh, wow. I'm not doing that. OK, right. That was irony. There's going to be a bit of that throughout the show. See if you can spot it, OK? Now... <laughs> That's when I say something I don't really mean for comic effect. And you as an audience, you laugh at the wrong thing because you know what the right thing is. It's a way of satirizing attitudes. Like that first joke, I use the old fashioned sexist trope that women aren't funny. Now, in real life, I know there are loads of funny women. Like, um... <laughs> <laughs> I did it again, well spotted, good. But these people are virtue signaling. They're trying to bring people down to raise their own status. And they say it's because, no, we're protecting minorities. Like, they're basically saying minorities haven't got a sense of humour, which is so patronising. And I get that as well, uh, yeah. to what it's like to be outnumbered. In this country, we're still only 5% black, 5% Asian, 5% LGBTQ, you know, tiny numbers. Now, I'm a white, heterosexual, multimillionaire, right? <laughs> There's there. less than 1% of us. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, that's the, that's the, do I whine? No. Do I, I don't mind. Just get on with it. Come on, Rick. Come on, Rick. Just keep fun. I'm like Rosa Parks. Do you know what I mean? I'm like... <laughs> except I fought for the right to never have to take a seat on a bus. But... He went there. This is me period, pondering whether I'm changing it to What an ok income. Wow, that's his Twitter. <laughs> start on a contentious subject mm -hmm. i feel the tension like oh is this gonna be all right are we being allowed to laugh yeah, yeah. and i take them through a scary forest yeah. and out the other <laughs> side and it, it's always okay and they phew yeah right? <laughs> and i think i think that's the important thing because i've often said uh, um uh that uh, people get offended when they mistake the subject of a joke with the actual target yeah and they're not necessarily the same thing you can make jokes about any subject it depends what the joke is yeah there's no there's no rules. You can't joke about this. You can. You, can. you should you be able to. You just can. Yeah. Okay. Um, and there's nothing sacred. But there has to be some... I don't agree with that, the, the, the term that there's nothing sacred. Maybe I'm biased. I'm, I'm definitely biased. Because me, when it comes to religion, you don't... You don't when it comes to religion, like religious figures, I'm a Muslim, but it doesn't matter whether you come for Muslim or for Islamic... Uh, religious figures or for christian religious figures because we, we share a lot of the, re, the religious figures 
like Moses, Jesus, we share all of them, like, and God, we, we worship the same God. So as far as religion is concerned, that's my red line. I don't do red line. It's like everybody has some red lines. Religion, God, and mothers and fathers, parents. Parents are also a red line for me. So the red line for me is God and his prophets and messengers and the parents. Other than that, you can joke about anything else, but those are my red lines. Let me know in the comments what are some of your red lines too, if you have if you have any. Great. Well, that's really? the point. There's nothing sacred. So yeah. everything should nah. be everything should be subject to ridicule. No. Yeah. I mean, as to, even just to force you to understand, think about it more. I know. But people then they go, uh, wow, um, yeah, but you shouldn't hurt people's feelings. Well, you mm -hmm. can if their feelings are wrong. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Get, if, yeah. if you don't okay. like the facts, get... Yeah, don't yeah. change the facts, change the feelings, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. um, I did think of adopting for a while a little third world child because that would tick all three boxes, wouldn't it? You know, you think of it like, one, I wouldn't be adding to the population problem. I'd be alleviating an existing problem. A young kid born through no fault of his own into abject poverty, he would have died without me. I can literally save his life yeah. and give him a great upbringing, right? Two, he would be grateful, wouldn't he? He'd want to pay me back, wouldn't he? Particularly if I let him know that all the other kids in the village, they weren't so lucky, they didn't make it out. I'd tell him that early on, so he really bucked his ideas up, right? I'd go, I'd go, Tundi, come here. Why Tundi? Yeah. Go and pop a shirt on, you're not in Africa now, mate. That's better. Yeah, Tundi, yeah, water straight out of a tap, and it, yes. No, it's not free, it's Hampstead. Yeah, of course it's safe. Safe, fresh drinking water. Have as much as you want, have a bucket full. Straight up, fresh drinking water. There you go. Go and clean the car. Go on. He is crazy. I knew he wasn't going to go for anybody else other than an African kid. He was, wasn't going to go for an Indian kid or anything else. He had to go for an African kid. But yeah, the video is long enough come right, uh, like this. So I'm going to cut it here. If you enjoyed it, like, comment, and subscribe.